Hello all, and welcome back to Tangents on Cracked Spines. If you're new here, welcome. As a quick intro, I'm Frankie, and we'll be reading with unedited personal commentary on the classics, or in reality, any story in the public domain. Listener discretion is advised, as some of the content holds adult themes and language. Uh, But today is a mini-episode. Because, happy in bulk. May Bridget bless the house wherein you dwell, bless every fireside, every wall and door, bless every heart that beats beneath its roof, bless every hand that toils to bring it joy, bless every foot that walks its portals through, may Bridget bless the house that shelters you. So, as I stated, today is in bulk. And it is a day where uh, it's the midpoint between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. And it's really a celebration of the turning from winter into spring. So there was some feasting happening, people breaking out... uh, they're the end of their root veggies, trying to make like hearty stews and uh, some basic breads, some jams. Uh, the term in bulk uh, means in the belly. It's also known as olmelk, which means Yule's milk. <clears throat> uh, again, I am American. If you want to correct my pronunciation, please do. Um. And old milk means used milk, showing that it's a time where the cattle tended to be either pregnant or uh, giving birth to their first uh, calves, kids, whatever, of the year. And so they were lactating, so they now had fresh milk, which allowed them to get a little further uh, through the year. Uh, Until... You know, they could start growing things again. Uh, it's also a associated with Bridget. Um, the Catholics call it St. Bridget's Day. It's also known as Candlemas. Uh, derived from it is also uh, Groundhog's Day. Because, you know, how long will winter be from now is a theme. It's also a time of setting new intentions. Uh, Bridget herself is the goddess of, I just went through all of this with my own celebration, (laughs) um, because we're all, uh, newbie witches to certain extents, and I'm the one who does the research for them. (laughs) So... She's the goddess of, like, fertility, the coming of spring, and uh, you lactation, as well as uh, smith work, healing, and poetry. So even her alternate attributes are a triple uh, threat, because she's known as a triple goddess. And so I wanted to share with you, I didn't find a lot of poetry so much as blessings. That's why the I started this with a blessing on your house. Let's see, another one is, May flowers always line your path and sunshine light your day. May songbirds serenade you every step along the way. May a rainbow run beside you in a sky that's always blue, and may happiness fill your heart each day, your whole life through. May the blessings of light be on you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you till it glows like a great peat fire. That last one didn't rhyme. (laughs) 
Um, and funnily enough, with the house blessing, we also helped a friend cleanse our house and start moving today. So that was one of the things. And it is celebrated several ways. Uh, you make straw dolls uh, and beds uh, to represent Bridget, give her a place to rest. Uh, you can change up your altar uh, so that it has white candles, uh, milk, woolen items, or um, she says uh, waterways. Water, waterways. You don't want to put a waterway. Water, St. Bridget's Cross. Uh, you can make uh, bannock bread. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I made a lemon poppy seed bread because that's what most modern in bulk breads seem to be. Um, you can visit wells. It's it's a fun time, you know, showing hey, we're almost there and we're trying to make it over that hump to spring. That's why one of the chants I found was, Old Man Winter, it's time to go. Take with you these piles of snow. Melt, snow, melt. Spring will soon return. A flame of fire, all the warmth it brings. Melt the snow, cold be gone. Welcome back the spring. I'm a little uh, tossed up on that one. Because theoretically if the ground's not frozen my well will start working again but because I don't have a guarantee of that the snow being gone means I've lost my uh, cheap way of collecting water <laughs> my mom had a timer for cake going on in the background if you hear that the winter is coming to an end, the stores of food are dwindling, and yet we eat and stay warm in the chilled winter months. We are grateful for our good fortune and for the food before us. Here, here, because at least where I am, it was in the negative degrees today, and while it's not unusual in Maine for there to be, you know, negative degrees at some point during the winter, it doesn't mean any of us like it. <clears throat> Keeper of the flame stuff, prayer to bring it, bride of earth. Here's one um, that is a Gaelic hymn to Brigid, uh, published in around 1900. Again, if I pronounce this wrong, I do apologize. You can let me know uh, how I did that. Or, yeah, correct me. Antrinum atrumnadad. A cromadar, a cromarag. Antula, antaige. Antagelech, on eidech. An noct, on anodach. An noct, a gaskak, on deck. Gak, on an goidech. Which apparently translates into the sacred three to save, to shield, to surround. The hearth, the house, the household. This eve, this night, oh, this eve, this night, and every night, each single night. Amen. <clears throat> um, now, it does just say Gaelic uh, in the... Uh, where I found this on Learn Religions. I do personally recognize that there are lots of uh, Gaelic is kind of a catch-all. There are several different ver variations of Gaelic or dialects of Gaelic, just like there are when you say that this is a Celtic tradition. We actually mean it's an originally an Irish tradition, especially considering there were like six countries that, you know, count as Celtic. Motherhood. Don't mind me. I did my research, but I still like to 
double check and look through things because I'm bad at <laughs> writing things down for this. <laughs> we also did, you know, her fire and water, the smith work uh, and waterways thing. We actually carved um, our intentions into tea lights, sealed the bottom of a tea light with the wax from a wax warmer, and then lit it while it was floating in uh, water in a mason jar. We all forgot our floating candles. <laughs> but hey, if you seal up the bottom, tea lights do float fairly well. <laughs> and that's everything I've got for you today. Uh, I got this information from Maybon House, uh, Learn Religions, the Boston Public Library, and Let's Go Ireland. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about um, a pagan slash Celtic holiday and, you know, go smell a dewdrop, which is the flower for the day. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Next episode, we will be starting uh, HP Lovecraft's uh, collection of works. I'm probably only going to do about four of his stories uh, before putting up another vote if you'd like me to finish uh, or move on to another four stories of his. We will do that. Um, and I may offer a um a something. <laughs> We may wind up having a guest reader because one of my friends absolutely loves H.P. Lovecraft and wants to read one of the stories. Again, thank you all for listening. And I do want to throw out there, I may sound snide when I say, oh, my whole three listeners. I actually appreciate the heck out of you. Because that means someone that is not my mother is listening to me. And that makes me feel good. Um, I did go into a slight depression because... Uh, um, because I've been doing this for, you know, almost eight months now. And I've read two full stories. And I only have three listeners. But I'm still super excited to have you three. The, the, <laughs> the depression was more along the lines of, apparently I am a very niche person. Um, not that I only have three of you. So, I promise, I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. And again, happy in bulk, Kandalmas, Groundhog's Day. Uh, apparently the Egyptian Festival of Nuts, which I did not look into, I'm sorry. Enjoy. <laughs>